Everybody, welcome. Ricky Reed. And I was making um, these pop records that were satire, plain and simple, um, mocking what I considered was the pop music of our day, which, you know, is, is wallpaper, is window dressing. It's sort of the background of our lives. And when I started, I thought that was the best thing was to be rage against the machine about it. You know, I'll make fun of all this crap and all my friends will think I'm cool and they'll still think I'm hip, you know. And I eventually realized that the best way to make pop music better is to make pop music better. You know, to not throw stones at the fortress from the outside, but, you know, maybe to be the Trojan horse. For me, you know, good is good. That's really what it is. I try to write the best songs that I can, the best, most unique songs. And then, you know, if Janelle Monae wants it, cool. If she doesn't, somebody else will at some point. Because if you tailor something to what an artist has already done, you're a year, at least a year behind, you know? You have to, you have to um, guess what that artist's next two or three steps are. Yeah. I really appreciate minimalism in songwriting and production, keeping things really simple. My arrangements start with way too much. The song is more than done, you know? Uh, and then I start typically peeling elements away from it, and peeling and peeling, and then at some point it'll just, I'll be like, this is it. If I take anything away, it would be missing something, but everything that I took off didn't need to be there. The work uh, with BMI on several levels has been great. Um, it started with me cold calling Casey and sending him uh, 10, 12 of my CDs and, uh, and him making a few introductions and me on this very one-on-one -on -one sort of ground level um, and also the one-on-one -on -one element for discussing songs and who songs might work for, this and that. Um, but then from an event standpoint, we've done a ton of events together. We did the South by Southwest showcase with BMI last year, which was fantastic. It was sort of a real turning point for the band. Um, it was that night where, you know, the people that, are, that have your back are bringing all the people they know that they want to see you. And it was very high pressure, very scary <laughs> situation for me, but it was all facilitated by the BMI folks. In the music industry with all these snakes and devils and people trying to steal your money and everything, they're as close as it gets to an altruistic organization that is around to, uh, I mean, they've helped me tremendously, but I think more than anything is um, they just connect people. And it's, it's amazing what they've done for me. Work, work really hard. I mean, as soon as you, as soon as you realizing that you are sacrificing seriously cool shit that you would rather be doing, as soon as you realize that you're missing out on that stuff, yeah. you know that you're in the right zone. You know, if you can always wrap it up at seven o'clock as your bros are getting a drink, then you're, you know, you may not be cut out for it. It has to be the process. Are you making the hottest and best records that will stick with people? You know, man, I mean, we all think about those records that the first record that you bought, like, you know, your freshman year in college or the music you listen to in your car with your mom. Like, you just gotta have an impact on people. That's what it is. Thanks, Rick. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you for being as well. That was cool. And I wanna extend my personal thanks to BMI, uh, again, for um, what they mean to this program, what they mean to me personally. So if you could give them also another round of applause specifically.